Okay, so by the time you're watching this video, you will be very familiar with this specification content here, showing you exactly what you should know. You'll be familiar with the movements that occur at all the different synovial joints. And you will also be familiar with the muscle groups that create movements at each of these particular joints. All of this information has been covered in previous videos. This is just literally a little reminder for you. Now what's really important now is that you, you have a go and you become comfortable in applying all this knowledge. So your bones and joints, um, names of bones, types of joints, classifications of joints, the movements that happens at synovial joints and of course the muscle names and you need to be able to look at sporting actions whether it's your own action or in an exam question they might give you a picture and you need to be able to apply that knowledge and name everything. So we're going to go through one example we're going to go through the arm action um, in front crawl and we're going to in most of the images look at the left arm but I think one of them we have to use the right arm just to show what we need to show. So, when you look at, uh, when you talk about skills, you have to be very specific. The sport is swimming, but when you're asked to talk about a motor skill, the skill within swimming is front crawl and specifically arm action. If you were talking about football, football is the sport, a header is a specific motor skill within that sport. So just be cautious that you talk about the skills and not naming the sports. Also, you need to be very aware that when you're describing a skill, you might need to be able to break it down into three phases, the preparation, the execution, and the recovery phase. And one image, one picture you have to talk about might just be asking you questions about a recovery movement or might just be asking you about preparation movement. So just be mindful of that really when you do application. So we're going to look at, first of all, in this slide, the next slide, the preparation phase. So the reaching forward from here to here of the left arm. And we're going to look at the, sh the shoulder joint, the elbow joint, and obviously the wrist and fingers. What you should recognize then is that the movement occurring here is a circular movement at the shoulder joint. And we know that that is called circumduction. We've got from a flexed position, we've got a movement that is extension where we straighten the arm and actually our fingers, our wrists, phalanges they stay fairly neutral and constant. So that's the sort of the joint and the joint movement and what we need to add to that now is the muscles that create that movement. So uh, having established that there is shoulder circumduction, the circular action there, um, the deltoid, which actually has three parts, a front, a middle and a back, um, contributes a lot in the rotational circular movements at the shoulder. So the middle deltoid is contributes probably more to lifting the arm, the shoulder out of the water. And then the front deltoid, the anterior deltoid, would be the forward part of that circular movement, pulling the shoulder or the arm forward. Elbow extension is created by the triceps brachii contracting and it's really important that you get familiar and, and comfortable using the word brachii because if you just say triceps you'll get zero marks in the exam. And as we said earlier the wrist and phalanges remain fairly neutral in this part of the action. So that was the preparation phase. Moving on to the execution phase we're going to actually look at the right arm here um, where you have that s shape sweeping action uh, through the water. So we have a different joint introduced here, the radial ulnar joint, which is a rotating joint in your forearm, a joint between the a pivot joint between the radius and the ulna. And in the sort of outward S shape curve, there's pronation, so there's rotation at that radial ulnar joint. And then in the inward movement of the S shape, there's supination where your palm is shown upwards. So we've got two rotating movements, pronation and supination. The elbow as you pull through the water flexes, so there's flexion at the elbow joint. And as you do the push phase of that S shape, your shoulder extends, move backwards as you get your hand back towards your thighs, shoulder extension. So again, we're going to now add the muscles to 
each of those joint movements. And this is easy because pronation is caused by pronator teres, obviously a very similar word, relatively easy to remember. And similarly, supination is caused by the supinators contracting to rotate your radio on the joint. Elbow flexion is caused by the biceps brachii. Again, remember to say brachii, not just biceps. And shoulder extension, so pulling your arm backwards at the shoulder joint is created by the posterior deltoid. And a little bit probably by the latissimus dorsi, the big muscle down your side, which actually attaches to your humerus. So that's the execution phase of the front crawl arm action. And finally, we're looking at the recovery phase, pulling your arm out of the water just before you go back into your preparation forward movement phase. The shoulder extension, so the arm is lifted backwards out of the water. There's elbow flexion, so you begin to bend your elbow. And the wrist and phalanges remain neutral once again. The muscles that then uh, create these movements, shoulder extensions by the posterior deltoid, pulling your arm backwards, elbow flexion as we know, biceps brachii, and the wrist and phalanges remain neutral. And there we've got the big overview, the big summary of each of those three phases. What you might also need to do to that, if you had, let's say, an image of somebody swimming and doing the front crawl, and you were asked about any one of these phases, you might need to also add to that information the bones that articulate at those joints. So you obviously know from previous videos that the shoulder uh, involves the humerus and the scapula articulating or joining. The elbow is the humerus and the ulna articulating and the wrist is the ulna and the carpals articulating. Having gone through that example, there's two places you, you, you'll have to use this application, this knowledge. One is possibly in an exam question where you get a lot of one, two, three, four marks for purely giving that information. The second place is that uh, for part of your verbal assessment, your practical grade, you will possibly have to watch, an, well you will have to watch another performer and it would be totally appropriate for you f to do a movement analysis. So to show off what you know, use the language, use the terminology whilst you're describing their performance and their strengths and their weaknesses. So two places you need to use it, possibly an exam question, possibly the EPIP, but what is really important is that you are using the correct terminology. You're not talking about you know, quadriceps anymore or quads, you're using the right language in your questions and you'll get the grade.